What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 23, season 3. Nobody likes you when you're 23, but you'll like this episode. I am Chad Talks, and joining me, as always, is J. Mac Gaming. I don't like you. Oh. Well, good thing you're not 23, Chad. I hate 23-year-olds. Yeah. Oh, well, unless you're, unless you're a 23-year-old who watches this, then we love you. Chad, this is Monday Night Raw. The greatest show on Monday. I'm Chad. Who? Who? What did I call you? You didn't call me anything. I was just stating. A, you said this is raw. I was stating another fact. Okay. Well, there goes my promo. Let's start the show off. Oh, oh, okay. um, Sorry. Justin Winston takes on Sonny Siaki, and Justin Winston wins in 10:30 with the elevated Sentinel Shocker. Big win for. Um, regen or generated guy justin winston yes. uh and now we have another pre-show segment of the SummerSlam promo chad uh two night two days ago on saturday week two august 2001 ufc crowned a new ufc world heavyweight champion and they're also here to promote SummerSlam. it's the ceo and world heavyweight champion of ufc dana white and butterbean <laughs> they're here to promote SummerSlam. <laughs> Butterbean, your world heavyweight champion in the UFC, and Dana White. Uh, I've <laughs> I've always thought uh, on the side of auto creating a company in this and making it UFC and seeing like having their product just have matches in like a. UFC matches in this game, like shoot fights, and see how they do. Seeing guys like eventually Butterbean, but then like eventually Ken Shamrock and maybe Brock one day just rolling up. Mm hmm. Always. I think uh, New Legacy Inc. did that in TW once. They had a, they, oh, nice. they made their own UFC company and Brock Lesnar ran through everyone. Nice. And then PCO died right before their big show. <laughs> it was oh, awful. Yeah. It was awful. Uh, yeah, so Butterbean yeah. and Dana White. We start off the t- oh boy, the Rock comes out and he calls out Alex Wright. Chad, he's tired of this punk ass. He's tired of this guy running his mouth about him. He's tired of having his mouth or the people's the people's champs mouth or name in Alex Wright's mouth. He doesn't care who he is. Okay, it doesn't matter that this guy killed his dad. It doesn't matter that he's he beat the Rock a couple weeks ago. That everyone knows. That the people's he oh, the rock is the people's champ, and then Alex Wright comes out, Chad. He comes out and he doesn't say anything. He gets in the rock's face and he slaps him once again. And the rock's pissed off. The rock looks at him, and Alex Wright kicks him in the balls. Oh, that bastard. And he starts jumping on him. He starts biting him, not biting him, punching him and kicking him, punching him, kicking ah. him. And then the music hits, and someone's here to rescue the rock, and it's Mick Foley. What? No! <laughs> ah! The Mick Foley is here, and he saves the Rock. He, he fights off Alex Wright, and we get the little Rock and Sock connection here, Chad. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> Another one is Jump Ship. All right, Mick Foley. Uh, Mick Foley's a big name. Yeah, this, this guy. This guy can still go. Fucking a big, great name. I, hey. Treat you guys better. Treat great. <laughs> Tell that to Eddie Guerrero. Tell that to Warlord. <laughs> we start off Monday Night Raw with PJ Black and Shane McMahon taking on the Rock and Roll Express 1002. PJ Black pins Robert Gibson. PJ Black, your Intercontinental Champion, was head and shoulders above everyone else, and he looked excellent out there. He looked great, 85. And then after the match, he says, you know, Dean Malenko, look, in all, with all due respect, Dean, it's, it's, we're in 2001, buddy. It's, I, think it's, I think we're past your prime. You know, this may be, it's the time, it's the new era of wrestlers here in WWF. Uh, you know, <laughs> maybe you can go cut it in with WCW. You know, they're giving their old dudes main event title shots. Maybe if you want to go over there and be in the over 40 club, 
Uh, you can go wrestle, wrestle on the other company. Dean's like, hey, you little... Uh, well, Dean's not even out here, so he doesn't respond. He says, uh, PJ's like, Dean, you may be one of the most respected wrestlers in the business, but at the end of the day, at the end of my career, I will be the most respected wrestler in the business. You see, I'm PJ Black. I married one of the McMahons. It doesn't matter what you do to me because at the end of the day, the man upstairs, I'm in his family. So if you want to beat me, if you want to you you turn me into a bloody pulp, Dean Malenko, at the end of the day, if that happens, I'll still be here. And you'll be you'll be fighting in Ring of Honor. You'll be fighting. What do you? What did you just? Did you, you all right? I just remember Ring of Honor mention. He's like, ooh, ooh, Ring of Honor. SummerSlam will be the end of the Dean Malenko run. And I mean, maybe, maybe though, maybe they'll remember it. You know, maybe when you retire in the next couple months, they'll re- they'll remember that little run, that little the little left hurrah for Dean Malenko. But for me, PJ Black, I'm just getting started. We move on. Kana and Mariko Yoshida have a one-on-one match, and you know, Kana does her thing. And again, these they'll get there because these guys just gotta get over. And it's hard. It's hard to do when. <laughs> When this game says, don't put people in the main show when they're unrecognizable. But everyone else can do it but me. Uh, we have a hype package between those guys. Uh, they're, they're just at home, Chad. They're just at home. They're hanging out. Brock Lesnar's uh, chopping logs down with his bare hands in Minnesota. Randy Orton's... Uh, and Mike Tyson is doing his thing. He's boxing. I don't know what Randy Orton's doing. <laughs> he's just... He's practicing his putt. Vince McMahon calls Lenny Lane into his office, and uh, he says, Vin- Lenny Lane? Uh, at, at this moment, I don't have anything for you at SummerSlam. Uh, you are a European champion. But there's... there's, uh, there's I'm looking at the notes here, and there's... Don't have a match for you right now, Lenny Lane. So I'm going to put it into your hands, Lenny. I want you to show the initiative and go find a fight. Go find someone to wrestle at SummerSlam. This is all right. All right. Lenny Lane picks his own opponent for SummerSlam, it sounds like. Uh, Hey, we got a big match right here. CM Punk and Christian Cage. In a bout that a good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd, Christian defeats CM Punk in 14.53. We immediately after that match go to commercial and come right back to entrances for Chad and Edge and a holy shit match. Edge defeats Chad in 15.03 with a missile drop. This got a 95. God damn right it did. These, this, I'm not, Chad, I'm not joking with you. You might win a world title here. This motherfucker can. This, has, this guy has no reason to go like this. I have no idea who he is. We're gonna have to put out a video where we just watch Chad Collier matches. <laughs> Chad Collier and Chase Tatum matches. What a match for! Uh, but Edge gets the win, and then these guys they just start all brawling. They take out tables. They take out chairs. Who, fucking Ace Steel has a steel ladder. And then Vince is like, hey, all you guys, stop it. Drop all the weapons right now. I'm sick and tired of it. Some team, Edge and Christian, you got tables. Chad, or uh, Ace Steel, CM Punk, you got ladders. Chad and Fig, your wives, (laughs) Chad's dancing on a table right now. Fig, what are you doing? I see tables. I see ladders. I see chairs. I see six men. I see three teams. I see two belts. Hanging high over the ring, SummerSlam, TLC, these three tag teams, the belts are on the line, boys. If you guys want to just become barbarians and attack each other with all these weapons, you guys are going to do it in the middle of the ring at one of the biggest parties of the summer, SummerSlam, TLC 1, baby. That match is going to be huge, Chad. We move on. Oh, 
these two boys. Again, we saw the Future Shock at home. Triple H is at home with uh, with a, a WCW wrestler who we can't name. <laughs> and Sean Stasiak's at home with his big pops. Stan Stasiak, and they're, they're grappling. And I think that leads... <laughs> hey, uh, China, what you doing? <laughs> oh, honey, you I'm not... Be, you can't be on camera. I'm live, honey, get off the screen. Uh, hey, Brian Danison defeats Kaiji Muto in 1514 with a ketamine elation. Oh. Big win for Brian Danielson here. Uh, yeah, and then we get Mark Henry, Teddy Hart here. The power slam, Mark Henry defeats Teddy Hart, Chad. Huge. And... Okay, cool. And our main event, Kurt Angle takes on... I had to check the ratio of the Angle thing. I didn't want to get fucking penalized again. <laughs> Uh, Kurt Angle defeats Kishi in 1635 with an angle slam in our main event of the night, Chad. This was a hell of a, a hell of a show here, Chad. Yeah, you thought this was gonna be a bad raw. <laughs> uh, Storyline wise, for wrestling matches, not really. It was not like this. Is, I mean, but Kurt Angle grabs the microphone and he has said, "Look, there is no one on this roster that I could that could beat me that I even have." that I even want to entertain with a match. So I'm calling out to you, Eric. I might be breaking the fourth wall a little bit here. Maybe, 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 Eric, maybe if you can't find anyone, Billy, maybe if you want to send someone over from your fucking show, you to get in the ring at, with me at SummerSlam, I'm all for it. But Eric, Billy, it doesn't matter who either one of you guys send, I want to, I want to fight at SummerSlam. I want to prove why I'm an Olympic gold frickin' medalist. I want to put the broken frickin' neck. I'm the wrestling machine, Kurt Angle. And what I want to do at SummerSlam is wrestle. So send your best men to SummerSlam. Because at Staples Center, I'm going to show to you why I'm the future world heavyweight champion. And he smacks the camera out of the out of his face, and the camera's just shooting up in the in the uh, up to the ceiling to end Monday Night Raw, ninety five. We're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. Okay, we'll have to see. I got a big show plan. We're back. Hey, Kurt Angle just mentioned Billy Kidman, Chad. I know. What's Billy gonna say to that? Well, I I ha- I have to wait until technically Thunder because. Because that was the, 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 the same time. Yeah. Time. So we're excited to see. Maybe he sends Hulk Hogan. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he sends Eric Angle. You know what? Go get him, Eric. <laughs> we'll see you for uh, for Nitro. All right. We are here at Nitro. Justin, we got to beat a 95. Yeah, it's not happening, brother. I, uh, I, I don't like to count myself out. Um, but you I don't should. think this is gonna do. I don't think this one's gonna do it. It could. It won't. I, I don't think it will, but it could, I guess. All right, let's uh, let's get into anyway, it. Anyway, without further ado, let's run the show. All right, let's get into it. We start the show off. Uh, Ahmed, uh, Planet Ahmed are in the ring, and you know they're they're just they're cutting a promo, and they say, you know what, we're taking on the Dudleys at the pay per view. And the Dudleys are so beneath us. In fact, there's not a single tag team, there's not a single wrestler who can keep up with Planet Ahmed. And it's just a, just a disgrace. It's a, it's a disgrace that guys like, guy, guys like, like Sting and, and Shawn Michaels are in the main event. But what about Planet Ahmed? We're the tag team champions, and we're going to, we've been killing everyone. It's ridiculous. I mean, but at least, at least, guys, at least we're not, at least that washed up has been schmuck, Bret Hart. At least he's not anywhere near the main event scene right now. In fact, he hasn't been really done anything as of late. I mean, the guy kind of sucks. He's, he's literally, whatever happened to the Bret Hart that I used to, that I used to watch and be in awe of? Now every time I watch him, I just... I just cringe because it's like it's like watching an old man try. And then Bret Hart's music comes out, and he says, "Ahmed, you seem to run your mouth, and I think it's time I, I someone shuts it for you." He 
You see, you like to you like you like to talk. You like to talk, but but you like to to, to speak a lot, a lot of a lot of shit when you've got your guys behind you. When you got guys like Big Daddy V and Monty Brown and D'Lo <coughs> backing you up. But Ahmed, I would love to see what happens if someone gets you by yourself. Here's the thing, Ahmed. Here's what I'm suggesting. All right, how about this? How about tonight? We see how good you really are, and we see how good I really am. You and I, we go one-on-one -on -one tonight. Ahmed says, Brett, listen, I... I'm the one half of the tag team champions, all right? I need, I, I can't wrestle. Listen, as much as I would love to wrestle you in the main event tonight in a singles match, it's just, I need to prepare, all right? I need to get, I need to make sure me and my brothers on Planet Ahmed are on the same page. So, Brett, listen, if you want to wrestle me, maybe someday if you're, if you're really good and you ask for it for Christmas, maybe I'll bring it to you. But in the meantime, no. Brett says, all right, fine, if you're going to be a little bitch, then how about plan B? How about I get the guys you're facing at the pay-per-view, the Dudley boys, and how about the three of us beat down the th one of you three? And Ahmed, at first he seems hesitant. And then he says, well, you know what, Brett? Fine. If you want to take us on in a six-man tag tonight in the main event? That's fine. We could use a little workout. We could use a warm-up. But Brett, I don't want to hear any more excuses. We beat you. Justin. Not at Ahmed taking on Brett and the Dudleys in the main event tonight. That's going to be... That is going to be something. Poor D-Lo. What's, what's he doing? He's in the main event tonight. Well, at least he's in a main event. Hey, good angle. Uh, speaking of tag teams, we got Fifth Finley and Chuck Palumbo. Tough enough coach and tough enough rookie. Taking on Tommy Dreamer and Carly Cologne. The immune tough enough rookie. And the coach... I'm a dreamer. And Justin, there was some stakes to this match because if Carly Cologne and Dreamer lost, then Chuck Palumbo was going to be saved and Fit Finley was going to be the number one contender. Oh. oh. Of course. Well, I don't want to tell you that until it was after the case. But yeah, it was live and die by the random. But listen, here we go. The poor, but it doesn't matter because Carly and Tommy Dreamer, they won their match. Yeah, good for them. Carly Cologne getting the win with a onward, outward rolling cutter. And after the match, Chris Benoit, he comes onto the ring and he says, first of all, congratulations on the match. Oh, uh, good guy, I, Benoit. I really, like, I really liked what I saw <laughs> out there. Carly Cologne, and he completely turns away from Tommy Dreamer and compliments Car Carly. He says, listen, Carly, you're, you're, you're doing really good and tough enough. Every time I watch you, you work, I, I'm impressed. Uh, you have a bright future ahead of you. It's just a shame that you've got a guy like Tommy Dreamer as your coach. It's a shame that... You're learning how to be mediocre. And listen, being mediocre is fine. There are a lot of guys in this locker room that are mediocre that are going to constantly stay on this roster. All right? It's, it's fine. You can be a fine wrestler. But if you really want to challenge yourself, if you really want to take that step, how about you leave Tommy Dreamer? You get coached by a champion. Carly Cologne, he takes the microphone and he says, Hey, man, not cool. All right, listen, Tommy Dreamer has taught me a lot, all right? I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm safe this month, and I got to say, I, it's because Tommy Dreamer has taught me a lot about getting into a fight, a lot of how to, how to get in the head of your opponent, and how to, how to take a lot of punishment and give it right back. All right, I owe Tommy Dreamer a lot, and I'm not going to sit here and let you talk about my coach that way. How about this, Chris? Huh? You want to see just how good you are, and you want to see how good my coach is? How about I show you how good my coach is when I show you what he's taught me? How about this? You wanna, you wanna, I've wrestled tonight. How about me and you wrestle? How about I wrestle again? You and me, Chris, tonight. And, and Tommy Dreamer, he's impressed by his rookie. And Benoit says, you know what? Sure. I'll see you out there. Bro, he's gonna kill let's, him. Let's see if your coach taught you anything worth a damn. Oh, it's his coach, is Tommy Dreamer. Probably not. <laughs> Justin, we are backstage, and Nash and Hall get attacked by. Uh, Paul Heyman guys. They beat down the FBI last week, and now they attacked Kevin Nash and Scott Hall. What the hell? What the hell? And we got Rob Van Dam, Justin. Rob Van Dam is here, and he's coming off of a big win against Chris Canyon. And he's taking on Johnny B. Bad, and then about to had good wrestling and a decent register in the crowd. Rob Van Dam defeated Johnny B. Bad with a uh, split leg moonsault. Yes, he did. 
One of a kind. Yes, he did. Then after the match, he is clunked in the back of the head with a chair, and Chris Canyon is here. I mean, uh, Justin, he's snapped. He, he, he just he just eats the living crap out of Rob Van Dam to the point to where Rob Van Dam has to get stretchered out, Justin. Ooh. Oh, wow. That's fucked up, Chris Canyon. Yeah. And we've got a match. Listen, Carly Colon had talked a lot of shit and, well, and defending his coach. And they had to back it up. And in a decent match, Chris Benoit defeated Carly Colon with a dragon suplex. Carla Cullen got a 32. Yeah. Not great. We are joined backstage, Justin, by the majority shareholder, Billy Kidman and Ted DiBiase. What's he got to say? Says, he says, he says, he says, Ted, there is so much aggression and, and beatdowns going on back here. And, and, and listen, it, it, it kind of... Kind of pisses me off, to be honest. Listen, I don't know what kind of ship the people who used to run this place, uh, kind of ship they were running. But listen, in the kid, ca- in the in the Billy Kidman, Ted DiBiase era. All right, listen, we're gonna we're, we're, we're gonna crack down on this. All right, so here's the thing. Here's the thing. I'm going to. I'm, 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 I, I got. I got. I got to take care of this. So here's the thing. We're gonna settle this in the ring. If you guys want to fight, then you guys can fight. In the ring, it seems like a lot of these people really need to work out some more aggression. So, barely legal, barely legal. We're gonna we're gonna make a couple matches, all right? At barely legal, Chris Canyon is going to go one on one against Benoit. And listen, he sent Benoit to the hospital on a stretcher. Well, guess what? Chris Canyon and Benoit. Or sorry, Chris Canyon and Rob Van Dam. Let's see if they can do it again because this match at barely legal, it's gonna be. Canyon versus Rob Van Dam in a stretcher match. And and, and and guess what? And guess what else? Ed? Guess what else? What? Uh, the Paul Heyman the Paul Heyman guys wanna wanna jump Nash and Hall? Well guess what? That's gonna All be right? a stretcher match. That's gonna be that they, they wanna fight, they wanna jump people from behind. Like they're in a, like they're in some kind of street fight. Well guess what? <laughs> Barely legal. It's gonna be pla- it's gonna be the Paul Heyman guys taking on Nash. And Hall in a street fight. Interesting. Billy Kidman laying down the law here. Who would have thought? Lay, laying down the law. And we've got the Sting and Shawn Michaels contract signing. Um, you know, and, and they're they're going back and forth. And and Shawn Michaels, he 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 he, he says he says Sting, since I'm champion, I'll go first. He says, but before I sign this contract, first I just got to say how big of a fan I am of yours. You know, Sting, it's no surprise that professional wrestlers, we watch the work from other wrestlers from other companies. And I've always been a fan of yours. From Surfer Sting, The Crow, to back when you were Big Money Sting, I've always been a fan of yours. And every single time I see you get in the ring, I'm just, I'm impressed. I'm impressed, but I also know that you couldn't lace up my boots. See, Sting, what I'm saying isn't arrogant. It's just the facts. You are a legend in this industry. You've You've done almost everything there is to do, except for Sting, except for go the superior company. You see, Sting, don't get me wrong. I came here, but I came here because I have wrestled everyone there is to wrestle over there. It brought out the best in me, and I may not have always won, but I always wrestled at the top of my game. Sting, you've always stayed here. You've never went to the other company. You say you never will, and I, and I think that's and I think that's commendable. But Sting, I have to ask, is the reason you're afraid to go to that other company, is it because you know that the people that come from that company, they're built different, Sting? Is it because you know that maybe you couldn't hang with guys like Triple H? Is it because you know you couldn't hang with guys like The Undertaker? Is it because you know you couldn't hang with guys like Kane or Kurt Angle? Because guess what? I've wrestled all of them. 
and I've came out on the other side. I came here because I knew I could be the best wrestler here. You said the same thing if you went there, Sting. I don't think you could. And I think it eats away at you, knowing that no matter how good the icon is, you'll never be as good as the heartbreak kid. Listen. Wrestlers have came to this company before to dodge me. They've came here because they knew they couldn't beat me, and they were trying to run from me. They didn't have the heart to stay where it counted and wrestle the Shawn Michaels, so they left. But you can't run anymore, Sting, because I came here, and in my first two months of being here, I've won the world championship twice. Sting, you need this match because you need to prove that WCW is still your house. But you need this match because you need to prove to everybody that you can beat the best of the best that the other company had, had, had on their roster. And I don't think you can. And Sting, he looks over and he says, Sean, I've been a fan of yours too. But I was a fan of your wrestling because backstage you've always been a douchebag punk. And it's clear. I hear the stories. I've heard people come from, from, from there to here that have always said the same thing. You're nothing but a spoiled brat. You know what I do to spoiled brats, Shawn Michaels? I show them what happens when you're disrespectful, and I show them what happens when you don't fall in the line and, and earn your keep here in WCW. How dare you disrespect me and say that I'm... I can't lace up your boots. Sean, they've got a guy pretending to be me at the other company. Because that's how popular they know I am. Sean, I'm not going to say much because I think actions speak louder than words. But at Barely Legal, I'm going to beat you. I'm going to tap you out to the Scorpion Deathlock in the middle of the ring. I'm going to embarrass you. And I'm going to become the WCW World Champion. And maybe, maybe you run back with your tail between your legs. Maybe you run back to Triple H and you ask him if he'll let you join up his little faction again. Or maybe you go run back to Vince and you tell him you couldn't hang with Sting. It doesn't really matter to me because at the end of the day, Sean, you will lose the icon, Sting. Austin, that is the contract signing between Sting and Shawn Michaels. Hey, all I heard was you know, fucking I had shitting on Sting WWF. I think you know he's way better. Shawn than Michaels me. put Shawn Michaels put WWF over. Yeah, and then he shit all over Sting WWF. So uh, <laughs> Sting did. This promo can go eat a dick. All right, all right. All right. <laughs> uh, speaking of things that won't eat a dick, uh, this decent match. Uh, Taka Michinoku defeated. Al Snow with a springboard uh, knee drop, whatever the fuck that is. It's a knee drop from the springboard. I guess so. And Justin, we are backstage. Trish Stratus has come to Debbie Malenko in China, and she has said, you know, I thought Shamel was my friend, but it's clear to me that she would. She turned on me and threw me away the first time she got it. She she got a little uh, fr- like as soon as she became friends with Beth. You know what, Debbie? China. I know you've had your issues with both of them. And Debbie, you're the world, you're, you're the champion. I'm going to do everything I can to help you keep that belt. And Debbie's like, well, I don't really know if I need any help keeping the belt. Especially from you, but. <laughs> but, li- but listen, if you want to help me uh, eat some bitch's ass, then, I mean, well, welcome aboard. I would love that. And, and that's pretty much that. They all form a, a, an alliance, Justin. Ooh. Well, brother, brother, Jack, brother. Uh, Hogan, he's like, you know what, brother? Let me tell you something, brother. I wa- I was backstage on my way to go hang out with my friends Kevin Nash and Scott Hall. And I saw that they were taken out. They were injured. They, they, they were sent. They had to leave the building. They were so hurt. And Billy Kidman, the, the, the majority shareholder, booked a street fight between the Heyman guys and Nash and Hall. Well, let me tell you something, brother. There's strength in numbers. And right now the Heyman guys... They have the numbers, brother. So I got to tell you something, all right? I'm not telling you it's going to be for good, but I'm telling you, brother, it can be for one night because I think it's barely legal. I think the Paul Heyman guys, brother, they face the... They they, they, they get a little dose of the new world order, brother. Oh, Jesus. No. No. (laughs) I thought this company was dead. 
Ah, oh, that's the NWO. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh no. Oh no. <laughs> and our main event, Bret Hart and the Dudleys taking on Big Daddy V, uh, Monty Brown and Ahmed. And a decent match. Bret and the Dudleys defeated Ahmed and Big Daddy V and Monty Brown when uh, Bret Hart submitted Big Daddy V with a sharpshooter. Oh. Yep. This was a match, Chad. This was a match. 82. Uh-oh. Well, we uh, did not beat a 95. <laughs> <laughs> but no. I said we wouldn't, so... <laughs> no, you did not. I'm going to write down but WWF. I, but, I, but I said we wouldn't, so... <laughs> I should have had Taka and Al Snow main event. <laughs> you could have had Carly Cologne Benoit main event. Your best match was RVD Johnny B. Bad. <laughs> it's not good. Yeah. Not great. Not great. But we built stories, and that's the important You used thing. Carly Cologne far too much on this show, it said. And that's okay. It's all about the stories. All right. We'll see you for um, SmackDown, where I, you know, just do my thing. And we are here on SmackDown. Justin. I mean, you already, I mean, I mean. I mean, yeah, you, I've already won. Gotta, you, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, unless Thunder does something, but you never know. It won't. You, you don't know that. No, I do know that, Chad. I read the script. All right, I read the the leak. I read the dirt sheet reports, and I know more than you, because when it comes to my wrestling, I like to know everything, and I just can't sit there and just be entertained. I need to know everything going on backstage before I watch a match. Ugh. Remember how fun wrestling was watching it before fucking Reddit? Ugh. God, just watch a match. You don't need to know everything going into it. Jesus. You know how fun it is to watch wrestling without knowing all the fucking inside scoops? Very fun, actually. I That's what I do now. Good lord. I remember watching in like 2012, 2013 and having to know every little leak. I needed to know the results going into it. I was, that's fucking miserable. God. Good, good God, people. What happens? Good lord. Just fuck it. You don't need to know what Brian Alvarez and Sean Ross Sapp says about Raw before Raw. All right? Just watch Raw. All right, I think I got my IWC rant out of the out way. Of no, this came out of this came out of nowhere. It's been rant. on my mind lately. Just good, just people just complaining about it. like who cares if the MJF things a work or shoot? Just fucking watch it. <laughs> I don't need to know if it's a shoot or a work because that's gonna ruin the immersion of it. Just fucking watch TV. All right, I'm uh, I'm done. <sighs> I mean, I mean. You're right, though. I mean, I get it. I get it. I get it. Twelve-year-old Justin watching 2007 SmackDown was the happiest I've ever been watching wrestling because Dave Meltzer wasn't a thing in my life. I was getting the SmackDown. What did Dave Meltzer say about this show? He probably already spoiled it. You probably already know. Uh, Pre-show match here. C.W. Anderson and Johnny Storm. They go again. We saw it a couple weeks ago on Raw. We're going to see it here. It did a little worse, but you know what? It was good. T.W. Anderson. Oh, T. Oh, God. I'm getting the, I'm getting the burps. Uh, the other pre-show match of the night, Jamie Noble and Rhino. And Rhino pins Jamie Noble in 1048 with a gore. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Eric Bischoff's finally getting good at working on the microphone. Remember when he came in, he was awful? Getting there. He's finally getting there. You just give him enough time. Maybe Billy Kidman can learn a couple things from Eric Bischoff. Maybe. Chad, wake up, buddy. I'm awake. Did I did my did my rant hurt you? <laughs> no, no, I, I, that was great. Uh, hey, we start off with Eric Bischoff. You know, announces the main event tonight. It'll be champion versus champion. Psychosis will take on a Booker T in a. And a big main event tonight. But he also acknowledges the shout-out and the the challenge laid down by Kurt Angle. 
He says, Kurt, I hear you. Now, I don't know if we're legally going to be allowed to mention the other competitor's name. I don't know if you could have done that, Kurt, but I know I will send someone to SummerSlam for you to challenge, for you to fight, for you to wrestle. All right, I have someone special in mind, Kurt Angle. And I'm not going to tell you. I'm not going to spoil it. I'm not going to surprise you. I want I want people to tune in the SummerSlam to find out who it is. But, Kurt, let me tell you right now, it's going to be a good one. Now, let's everybody enjoy Friday Night SmackDown. St. Petersburg, Florida, we love you. Let's jump into SmackDown here. Tajiri takes on Caprice Coleman to start off Friday Night SmackDown. Tajiri gets a nice win with a brain buster in 1440. Big win for Tajiri, the number one contender. Uh, after the match, his his buddy Chris Daniels comes in, and it looks like he's going to miss Tajiri. And Tajiri turns around, and Chris Daniels is like, I, I could have done it. I could have done it. And Tajiri's like, <laughs> and then he spins. Praise he does his mist into Daniel's face. What a what a rat fucker. What a rat fucker. I uh, agree. And Daniel's like uh, Tajiri's like, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> They're two friends though, so the Daniel's is laughing it off, you know? Oh, oh so it's just a it's a it's an old classic friend. Yeah. All right. Uh backstage, Randy Savage is uh you know, he's he's rocking back and forth. He's uh you know, he didn't have fun with Ric Flair last week. And Rick's like, Arn, get in there, man. He's, he's got his mind on Elizabeth. You got to snap him out of it. Arn Anderson goes in there and he chops Randy Savage. Chops him right in the chest, Chad. For, for, for friendship. It's like, Rick, or Randy. I did this because I love you, brother. Woo! Randy, snap out of it. All right? I don't like seeing you like this, Randy. You're over. You're like this over a woman. The Anderson family. We've never had women in our family in over forty years. And look at us. <laughs> <We're the> t- <laughs> I've never felt the impression of a woman in forty years. Look how tough. That's made me meaner and bad. Look how tough I am, Randy. I've never touched a woman in my life. All right. And Randy's like, my kids were just, I made my children out of clay. (laughs) Randy's like, well, that's why you're always down in the dumps, Arn. Slaps him again. Get it together. You guys have another tag match. And I can't have my my two best friends lose, all right? I swear to God, if you guys lose, I'm going to lose it on you two. Oh. So Ric Flair leads Randy Savage out there. They're taking on the Basham Brothers of TNA, Chad, in our next match. And uh, in a subpar wrestling match, the Basham brothers win. Ooh, wow. Big upset. When uh, Randy Savage gets hit with a leg lariat after a distraction from Elizabeth. Randy notices that Elizabeth is sitting front row here at the St. Pete to- Times Forum. And he's like, uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Down bad. <laughs> he is down bad. D- Doug Basham uh, sneak attacks Ric Flair and... Uh, you know, or Danny uh, sneak attacks him. Doug hits the leg Larry and gets the win over the uh, over Rick and Randy. Wow. The Basham brothers getting a big win here. And <laughs> uh, yeah, we get the hype package for Austin and uh, Taker, Chad. Just recapping everything that's happened over the last eight months or six months, four months, six months, six months. Many months. Renee Dupree was terrible with no script. Oh, remind me to script him. These boys are getting ready. Uh, they're in a. Oh, my, oh that's fine. Uh, yeah, Renee and uh, Renee and uh, Rob Conway or Renee Dupree and Savannah Grenier get a big win over at TNT when Renee Dupree hits a Dupree driver on Tony Mamaluke and um, <sighs> Amazing Red swollen calf muscle. Not good. Not, Not good. good. Thanks, Michael. Oh, Savon, buddy. All in calf muscle. Buddy, you swole his calf. Kid Cash, 
He's uh, setting up his grand party, Chen. He's got the cake. He's getting the cake ready. He's got the board with all his pictures over his career. Um, he's got an inflatable bounce house outside. You know, he's getting ready. It's the graduation from a kid to a man for Kid Cash at SummerSlam. <laughs> uh, Kane and Silence make their way down in the ring, Chad. These two freaky little fucks are. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a tag team, the freaky little fuck. Kane defeats the park in 1048 with a choke slam after the match. He f- doesn't cut a promo. Uh, we oh, go. St- uh, Kane. Kane's supposed to just acknowledge John Cena's challenge and accepts it. Uh, Jeff Jarrett pins uh, DDP in 1456 with a figure four leg lock. And then uh, backstage, Clyde Flanders is, uh, you know, he may be hurt. But he's warming up Booker T. You know, he's got his damaged shoulder. He's out for a few weeks. He will not be at SummerSlam. Um, but Booker T, it will be. And he will be taking on Jeff Jarrett, the man who just won in that last match. And Clyde Flanders is like, hey, man, I beat him before. And if I beat him, you beat me. And that means you beat me so you can beat him because I beat him and then you beat me. And Clyde and Booker's like, shut up, man. Okay? Just... just <laughs> Go get what the it. hell you just said to me, dog. <laughs> Tell me he did not, did just, not said. just say that. <laughs> just go go get my belt. Let's go. Booker T and Clyde Flanders make their way Fuck down. Up. Their way down to the ring. Yeah, and uh Booker T and Psychosis one on one. Psychosis gets a win in seventeen thirty three with a guillotine like drop. A decent little match right there, Chen. Champion versus champion. But you know, you know what's gotta be done, Chad. You you know who's got to come out and lay the beat down. Whoop! <laughs> uh, Scott Steiner puts little psychosis in a torture rack and hits him with. Say the- my name. <laughs> Say the big bad booty daddy's name, bitch. <laughs> and lays out the champion. Twelve, uh, fucking eleven days. I hope, yeah, I hope Scott Steiner wins. This nine up. days away from SummerSlam, and ninety-one. Wow, wow. What can I say? We did it again, Chad. I hope Scott Steiner wins. I hope. I don't. I really hope Randy and Rick don't leave after losing to the fucking da- Bassman Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> they were not happy about that. I can imagine they probably weren't too giddy about it. <laughs> Uh, we'll see you for, uh, fuck for, fuck them, Thunder. I don't know how well this is, oh, hey, we're back, it's Thunder. <laughs> it's not going to do great. Um, I have no idea how this is going to go. Have some confidence, Chad. I'm confident it's not going to be bad. I don't think it's going to be bad. I don't think it's going to win show of the week, though. No, I mean, look, nothing's going to beat the show of the week, Chad. Uh, All right, start? Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, let's get into okay. it. So we have here, Raven is here, and he's like, you know, he's, he's talking about how ever since he's been teaming with, with Owen, you know, they've been getting closer and closer to winning Tag Team Gold. And the only reason why they didn't get it at the Bash of the Beach was, of course, because Shamrock and Vader got disqualified. He says, but, you know, there's uh, very there's no tag team in this company that deserves a shot. The Thunder Tag Titles more than Raven. And Owen, and even though Owen's not here tonight, you know Raven's speaking on behalf of the team. Then he's interrupted by Scotty, by by Too Cool, um, and then Matt Hardy and Abyss also interrupt him, and they all had claim that they want a shot at Ken Shamrock Invaders tag team titles. Um, and then they are all interrupted by Shark Boy and Low D, who, um, you know, who who are also Justin. They're trying to get in the mix too. So these three, these four teams, they all they're all trying to get a tag title match at the pay per view. Yeah, that's it. Which, uh, you know, so now all of them get in a big argument, which leads to this match. Okay. Uh, which is Raven versus Scotty Tuhati versus Lodi versus Matt Hardy. And about to have good wrestling. And DC Russian in the crowd, Justin. Matt Hardy defeats Scotty Tuhati. Um, when Matt Hardy pins Scotty Tuhati with a flying leg drop. There you go. Look at that. Yeah, good for Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy, Matt Hardy getting a win, just like we drew it up. Goldberg is backstage, and he's talking about, you know, or asking him, like, are you worried about Steven Regal? He's like, am I worried about Regal? You know, I was a monster in Japan. I was whooping ass. I beat everyone. If 
finally felt good to be Goldberg again. I, I, I had a streak. It was great. I loved it. Then I realized I needed to come back home. I needed to come back to WCW and wreck havoc. So when the opportunity came to come to Thunder, I knew what I had to do. And then Samoa Joe broke his arm, and he's actually the smartest and luckiest thing that's ever happened to him because he didn't have to get in my way now. Listen, I could say Regal's next, but that's something that you're all expecting me to say. I'm not going to say that. Am I worried about Regal? Absolutely not. I'm going to spear his goddamn head off, and I'm going to win the Universal Championship. That's all I care about. That. Oh, Justin, Lord. we've got we've got champagne. Justin, champagne is here, and Justin, Davy Boy Smith, uh, you know he was he 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 was looking for an opponent. He said, "Listen, I'm the 24/7 champion, so who wants to come out here and face me for the 24/7 champion?" And then about that decent wrestling, but not much heat. Champagne defeated Davy Boy Smith with the uh, with, with with the what's called called a swank. <laughs> what the what the fuck is that? <laughs> I don't know what that is. With a swank, Champagne oh. wins the twenty four seven title. I don't know if I like that finishing move. We might call. So we might have him beat him with something else. Oh, I like it. The swank. The swank. No, oh, it's. I'm looking up Chad Collier matches right now. Oh, did he face Champagne? No, he faced CM Punk and he's faced Low Key. I'm gonna watch him. Oh, nice. We'll watch him after the, today's recording session. Oh, cool for sure. We got a new 24-7 champion, Justin. And then, Justin, get a load of this. We With have the swank. A <laughs> we have a debuting, um, a, deb- a, new, a new debut on the roster. Jimmy Yang is here. Yeah. NXT call-up, former NXT X Division champion, Jimmy Yang. And an about that had good wrestling and decent wrestling from the crowd. Rey Mysterio and AJ Styles, Ray J, defeated Homicide and Jimmy Yang when AJ pinned Homicide with a spinal tap. Uh, Jimmy Yang got a 61. Wow. Uh, Wow, good for him. Yeah, wow, wow indeed. Uh, homicide, a weak link. Yeah, poor Homicide. Oh, uh, that match is shown on a TV backstage, and the Sweet Sensations are watching it. And Team Canada show up, and they go, yeah, are you watching that too? Listen, these guys just think they can just show up here, call themselves a team, and start climbing the Cruiserweight Tag Team ladder? <laughs> That's ridiculous. Listen, you don't like us, and we don't like you, but we need to stop that from happening and sweet sensations they look at them and they go yeah i think i think you're right justin it looks like sweet sensations and team canada are uh have a common enemy in uh in ray j i hate ray j too and kardashian doesn't hate ray j and do we go backstage <laughs> and billy, <laughs> billy kidman is here with ted dibiase and and, and billy kidman he's like he's like uh, hello, me and Ted DiBiase just had a, a couple of things we wanted to say. First and foremost, all right, listen, ever since I started taking over this company, right, ratings have been up. We've been having, uh, the product has in- increased, and we even have other companies. And we have wrestlers from other companies talking about us directly, telling us to bring people for matches. Listen, I heard you, Kurt. I heard you. And listen, uh, you know, I, I can't give away all my secrets, but just know I appreciate the free publicity over in WWF. Um, that being said... Hey, fuck you. <laughs> that being said, um, we've got a big... Listen, I, I, Jeff Hardy asked for an opponent for, for the TLC... Or for the TLC, for the, ta- for the television championship. And, and, and Ted and I discussed it. And listen, what better way to test Jeff Hardy? To test our new TV champion. Than to have him go one on one against a, a former world champion, and that's why, at 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 barely legal, Jeff Hardy is going to defend the TV title against Shannon Moore. All right, and maybe maybe giving T- Shannon Moore a TV title uh, opportunity will shut his mouth. Quite frankly, the man just now, relinquished his belt and never got his shot for it again. And now for our main event, <laughs> for our main event of the night, Shannon Moore is going to have an opportunity. To put to take out some of these frustrations, all right, and so is Goldberg because it's going to be Shannon Moore and Goldberg taking on their opponents at, at barely legal. Stephen Regal, nice, and Jeff Hardy. All right, sorry, I'm frustrated about that. <laughs> about Shannon, Moore. justice he, for Shannon. He never got a world title. He, he relinquished it because of injury and never got to fight for it again. 
Justice for Shannon. Oh, I had the wrong button. Shannon Moore, he's, he literally is, he's like freak, he's mad as fuck. He's like, says the same thing you said. He's like, first of all, I shouldn't have to be on the TV championship match. I should be fighting for the world title I never lost. Justice for Shannon. Justice for Shannon. He's just he'll go around the locker room yelling justice for Shannon. And Justin, these matches are important because uh, the the losers of these matches are going to face off at barely legal and decide who on the Thunder side is going to be the first elimination from Thunder. Now, Mike Flan Mike Sanders has already been uh, immune, so it's going to be Shelton Benjamin and Chris Harris versus Charlie Haas and Claudio Casagnoli. And then about that, decent wrestling, but non-existent crowd heat. Uh, Chris Harris defeated Shelton Benjamin. <laughs> Uh, so once again, Justin, Shelton Benjamin is going to a pay-per-view to fight for his life. This poor fucking guy. Who will he wrestle? We will find out next. It's an about wow. that had subpar wrestling and non-existent crowd heat. Charlie Haas defeated Claudio Casagnoli with the Haas of pain. Yeah. What a match that this means, was. Justin, it's going to be Shelton Benjamin versus Claudio. What a fucking match. Yeah. What a match. And our main event of the night, Jeff Hardy and Steven Regal taking on Goldberg and Shanna Moore. And then a superb match, Jeff Hardy and Steven Regal defeated Goldberg and Shanna Moore when Steven Regal submitted Shanna Moore with a Regal stretch. After this, the reason why they won, Justin, is because Goldberg just just left. He just left. He just he just he, once he realized Shanna Moore, what, Shanna Moore ignored him so much, and he just left. But then after the match, Goldberg turns back around and starts to run at Steven Regal. And he's going for another spear. And as he's going for this spear, Regal turns around and pulls out the brass knucks he had in his trunks and punches Goldberg in the head. The brass knucks. And he grabs a microphone and he says, Now I face you at the pay-per-view for the Universal title. It's going to be barely Regal. Get the fuck out of here. No, no, barely. Uh, we'll see. 80, good lord. You had two awful shows this week. Yeah, uh, not great. We'll see you for the go-homes, where I'm sure they'll yeah. even get better. The go-homes. Five-on-fives and four-on-fours inbound. 